Each year, you know that our government leaders give us the State of the Union Address, the State of the State Address, the State of the County Address. But every year, the most important address to me is the State of the Church Address. You see, I pray, I don't watch Christian television, so I don't know what prophetic words have been spoken. I don't listen to Christian radio during a season because I want to hear directly from the Lord. It's not that God isn't speaking to other people. He is. But I want a word from Him. So every year for the first weeks of the year, I seek the Lord, fast and pray, and ask God for a prophetic word for our church for the year that will not only be fulfilled personally but corporately as a church. Last year, as you know, in 2017, the state of the church address was one word. It was the word resilience. The picture of that word, if you've ever looked it up in the dictionary, is that it's like a rubber band that's stretched, and when you release that stretched rubber band, it comes back into the original shape. The idea behind the word resilience is the word bounce back. And I declared at the beginning of 2017, 2017 would be a bounce back year for KC and for all of you personally. And truly that was the case. On Maui, for example, our life groups grew to over 400. We're at 417 life groups now. We bounced back. Here on Oahu, there's been bounce back in that ministry and in other ministries. We have almost a thousand life groups now in the U.S. alone. We saw many families who once attended our church start coming back home. It was amazing to see people that had been away for years coming home. We saw financial bounce back personally among so many, but as a church, our giving grew, our tithes and offerings grew. We, we began to uh, see dramatic things happen. For instance, one of the things that happened is we, we were able to refinance our loans, and we dropped it from 7% to 4.25%. Somebody say hallelujah. In 2015, one of the greatest moments of my life was at our celebration conference on Maui. We had proclaimed in 2010 that by the year 2015, we would be in 120 locations ministering to 20,000 weekly. And sure enough, God fulfilled that. And I remember at that celebration conference, 124 banners marched through the cathedral. And we all wept and rejoiced in the goodness of God. That was 2015. But little did I know, in 2016, we would be hit with a lot of difficulties. A number of the extensions closed down in various nations. And some was because of civil war, some because of other things. And I, I said, God, you gave us a new vision the one, two, three vision, 100 extensions in the U.S., 200 overseas, and 30,000 people in our life groups. And, and, and it doesn't look that way in 2016. But in 2017, God gave us the word bounce back. And I'm going to tell you what began to happen. When we hit 2017, those extensions began to bounce back. Today, we're right on schedule, 165 campuses and we're on our way to 300 somebody say hallelujah personally many people experienced a bounce back year i could see it in their lives in their ministry and their giving one of the things that happened was an amazing thing you know every year i challenge you all to beat me in giving you know that don't you and i don't know why you aren't doing it i haven't figured it out yet but Back in, back in the year 2000, God spoke to me and said, I want you to give 100000 a year. Well, for me to give 100000 a year, because I'm not in business, I don't have any mechanism by which to do that, he has to supernaturally bring me money. But every year, all those years, God's allowed me to give over 100000 Last year, I gave about 130000 That's not a lot of money for some of you, but for me, it's huge. But there was a couple in our church who said, Pastor, we're going to beat you. I said, try. This is, they beat me this year. They beat me. They gave 158000 I said, oh, Jesus. This was a bounce back year for them. 
I'm believing for all of you to beat me. Somebody say amen. I'm believing for resources to be released in this house that will allow us to touch the world. Come on with the gospel. That's the only reason we're here. Somebody say amen. amen. Bounce back. You say, well, pastor, what's the word for this year? Well, God led me to this text, and you'll notice when you look at the text that there's a call by God. And the call is to strengthen the feeble hands, to steady the knees, to say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. And the reason why we should do this is because God will come to save us, as it says in verse 4. And then he goes on in verse 5, the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, miracles will happen. And thirdly, the Holy Spirit will be poured out. It's a picture there in verses 6 and 7 when it talks about the Holy Spirit as waters will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. So he says, look, be strengthened. Don't be stuck with feeble hands. Steady your knees. Don't let your knees knock because of fear. Don't have fearful hearts. Be strong. Do not fear because God is on the scene and God is going to do something powerfully for you. Miracles are going to come forth. The Holy Ghost will manifest himself. So he said to me, the word for this year, 2018, is the word strength. Everyone say it with me. One, two, three. Strength. Turn to your neighbor and say, be strong. Turn to your other neighbor and say, be strong. Notice that the strength and the Holy Spirit go together. And this is because our strength comes from the Lord. It's not in our natural self. When you look at the whole concept of strength coming from the Lord, you're struck that there in Exodus 15 too, it's the song of Moses and Miriam. Since the Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. David sings a song of praise in 2 Samuel 22 when he says, it is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. And in verse 40, he says, you arm me with strength for battle. You'll notice over and over again the Psalms talk about the strength that God will give us. Psalm 18, 1, I love you, O Lord, my strength. Psalm 29, 11, the Lord give us strength to his people. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. 28, 8, the Lord is the strength of his people. I can go on and on and on. The Lord gives strength to his people, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. It's not just in the Old Testament. In the New Testament as well, Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who? Christ who? Oh, come on, say it. Christ who? Strengthens me. Oh, I love 2 Corinthians. Everybody turn there just for a moment because it's a profound verse of Scripture and I want you to see it because once you read it, you realize, wow, this is a verse I can use for, for God to touch my life. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You'll notice verse 9 and 10. It's an amazing verse. Paul is talking about a messenger of Satan that's tormenting him. But the Lord speaks to him and says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. You say, I'm getting old. Don't worry about it. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will gladly boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults, in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Everybody say it with me. God, in 2018, is going to make me strong. Since strength is the work of the Holy Spirit, don't be surprised to see greater, greater manifestations of the Holy Spirit in our midst. 
Don't be surprised when you come to church that eyes will be open, ears will be open, the lame will walk. You say, oh, well, that happens in third world countries. No, it's happening among spirit-filled people who are believing that God's power is available to them. It's amazing to me how the Word corresponds to the Word. If you turn over to just a few more chapters there in Isaiah, to Isaiah 41, you'll notice that it again, verse 10, is a word about fear. And it says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And it goes on to share how the enemies will be destroyed and that he'll make us into a threshing sledge, new and sharp. And then he goes and talks about the water again and the flowing of rivers in the barren lands and barren heights. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. It's over and over again. God's strength comes as a result of the working of the Holy Spirit and it affects every aspect of your life. How do we see this word fulfilled in our lives and in our church? Well, is there something we need to do to allow this word to be fulfilled? Well, let me just share the first thing. Write it in your notes. Stay in covenant. Everybody say it with me. Do what? You see, Samson had supernatural strength. As you know, the story of Samson, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him. He could lift up huge city gates. He could, he could destroy the enemy. But it was because he was in covenant and the hair on his head was a symbol of that covenant that before he was even born, his mother was given a word from the Lord that her son would need to be a Nazarite. Part of a Nazarite vow was to allow their hair never to be cut. It was a symbol of a covenant. And the moment he broke covenant was the moment his strength was taken from him. Now, everybody listen to me. It's God's intention for this year for you to be a year of strength in your life and in every aspect of your life. Just as what God did in bounce back year last year, he's going to do it this year for you of strength. But you must stay in covenant. You say, what does that mean to me? Well, stay in your covenant by being faithful to the Lord. Be faithful in all of your covenants. If you borrowed money, be sure that you do everything in your power to keep paying it back. That's covenant. Be sure that in your marriage covenant, you're faithful to it. Think about the covenant you make when you become a part of a church. Stay true to that covenant. Let this house be your house and may you see it grow May you put that which God has given you, your gifts and talents, into seeing it become what God wants it to be. I believe that if you'll keep covenant with your ministries, keep covenant with your family, keep covenant with your jobs, keep covenant in every aspect of your life, you're going to find that the strength of God is going to come upon you and give you greater strength to fulfill the covenant you've made. Secondly, grow in the Word. One of the things that's very fascinating to me is when you read the book of Joshua, the first chapter, you'll notice that God over and over again says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. And if you kind of outline every time God says that statement to Joshua, you'll notice a pattern. One of the things you'll notice is when he says in Chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, be strong and very courageous. He says, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from, from, from it to the right or to the left. Then you may be successful wherever you go. And do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You know... I'm very thankful that we as a church preach from the Word and not the newspaper. I'm glad you're hungry for the Word. That's why you're here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. That's why you're in a small group. I'm thankful for it. But make the Word the centerpiece of your life. One of the things that I've so appreciated every Saturday, I meet with a group of men on Maui. We call it the gate. 
And uh, we have a chapter we're supposed to read every day. And, uh, and so I find myself just reading to enjoy reading the Word of God and marking it up like my mom used to do. My Bible's full of notes all on the sides. And, and it, it's fun because I'll reread a passage years later and there I'll have my writings on it as to what God spoke to me years before. And it's just amazing. I'm just enjoying every day. And then at prayer meeting every morning, and I'm telling you what, God has really been doing something in terms of bounce back last year in prayer. We have over 120 people standing to pray every morning on Maui, praying. I'm not talking in their homes. I'm talking going to a prayer center and praying. Somebody ought to get excited. You're being affected by the prayers of the people there at the cathedral every morning, every morning, every morning. Now, I know here you pray in your car stuck in traffic. Hallelujah. I understand that. I understand that. And so I don't judge you. But I'll tell you what. At those prayer meetings every morning, we read the chapter, and I just glean from just whatever the reading is. The Word is life to us, and it is strength to us. In Proverbs 24, 5, it says, A man of knowledge increases strength, and every time you read the Word, you're getting to know the Lord a little bit better. Some, the psalmist says in Psalm 119, 28, Strengthen me according to your Word. That brings me to the third thing. Not only are we to stay in covenant, not only are we to grow in the Word this year, but wait on the Lord and pray. You'll notice that Paul writes in Colossians 1, 9 through 11, a prayer. And it's interesting to me what he prays. He says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. He literally prays for the Colossian church that they'll be strengthened. He does the same thing in Ephesians 1, and in Ephesians 3, he prays for strength. In Ephesians 3, he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with his power through his spirit. I love what the psalmist says, wait for the Lord, be strong for the Lord. The writer of the book of Chronicles encourages us in second and first chronicles 16 11 look to the lord in his strength seek his face always listen to me if you'll commit to seek the lord in prayer and waiting on him you're going to find yourself strengthened they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall rise up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Somebody ought to get excited in this house. You say, what are you doing wasting time not doing nothing but just talking? It's who I'm talking to. And it ain't a waste of time. Who you been talking to lately? I walk through the airport, you know, and people are just talking. They Looks like they're talking to themselves. But they got a little earphone on, you know, and they're just talking away. Well, so I do the same thing. They don't know I don't got an earphone on. I'm just, I'm just talking to the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I'll tell you what. They don't know. I'm not any different than the rest of the clowns there. I'll tell you what. Wait on the Lord. Pray. Let this year be the year where you say, hey. I'm going to make my life what it needs to be. I'm going to be a man of prayer. I'm going to be a man of the Word. I'm going to be a covenant man. And fourthly, stay filled with the Holy Ghost. One of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. And it's interesting to me that in Nehemiah 8, it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Boldness comes from the Lord as a result of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 4, they were facing persecution. And they prayed. And the place where they were was shaken. And it says they were filled with boldness. Oh, I love that passage. Behold, I give you power. Tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost that you have. Whew. Oh, I like what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5. Don't get drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to God. You know what I like about this church? 
is you can come to church and you can sing, you can dance, you can lift your hands in the air, you can speak in tongues and nobody thinks you're weird. That's a blessing. You can get full of the Holy Ghost, fall out, run around the building, everybody just thinks you're normal. Hallelujah. Say, why would you want to do that? I'll tell you why I want to do that. Because I know when I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, there's a strength that comes upon me that's greater than anything I know. What I need is his strength. Desperately. But always keep in mind that God's strength in our life has a purpose. Samson's strength had a purpose. It was to deliver the children of Israel from the bondage of their oppressors. When you read Joshua chapter 1, you'll notice that God says in verse 6, Be strong and courageous. You will lead this people to inherit the land. He was saying to Joshua, you have a job to do, so be strong and courageous. Every one of you sitting in this room has a purpose God has placed upon your life. You're not here by accident. You say, oh, you don't know what happened, mom and dad. Man, I, hey, forget it. You're here because God called you here. You are in this house today because God brought you here. You have a purpose. He has a plan for you. It's a good plan. He's going to strengthen you to fulfill it. Let's think about Stephanie today. I saw Stephanie up here dancing around. Where are you? Wave at me. Where are you, Stephanie? When I used to come up here, you're just barely walking. You hang out with this group, you start dancing. I'm going to tell you why. Sister Ho, you're still dancing around, praising Jesus. Hallelujah. Strength, because there's a purpose behind it. But there's something that all of us need to be conscious of. We must heed God's warning so we don't lose our strength. You say, what are you talking about? Well, first off, be careful of pride. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 16, there's a profound verse. It says, but after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord. Uzziah was a great king, one of the great kings of Judah. God had blessed him so big that when he got blessed so big, he thought it was coming from him. Now listen, I've pastored a long time, almost 50 years. Listen to me. I've seen God bless people, overwhelm them with blessings. And the tragedy is I love the blessing of the Lord, but if those blessings of the Lord begin to make you think you're somebody not needing God, you can lose it overnight. I've seen pastors who have great ministries. They're no longer in the ministry today because they thought their ministries was because of them. That's why I pray every morning. That's why I'm at that prayer center every morning. That's why I seek the Lord every single day. I know that none of this is because of me. People say, oh, you must, be, you must be extremely talented. No, 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 no. I figured out what I am. I'm a surfer dude who's never surfed. No, no, really, really. I, I body surf. You can tell my body's work for that. But, but I've never gotten on a surfboard, but I can imagine what it's like. The whole idea of a surfboard is you get on it and you try to balance and let the wave carry you in, right? That's all I do in life today is I try to balance what God's doing because he's got a big wave behind this thing and I just got to stay on it trying to say, oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus. And I know if I get proud of myself, think I'm doing something, boy, that wave's going to knock me flat. Be careful of pride. Keep in mind, secondly, that your strength is not for ourselves but for others. Paul writes in Romans 15, 1, we are strong. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good to build him up. God will give you strength to be a blessing to others. But here's the third thing, and it's amazing because when Pastor Josh was preaching, he didn't know what I was going to preach about. But he almost preached my message. I think the Holy Ghost was on him. 
We must not allow fear or discouragement to rob us of strength. When you look again at what God said to Joshua in Joshua 1.9, he said, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. He said, well, look, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm really in a bad mess. No, 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 you don't understand. The Lord is with us. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you, I hear you. I'm, I want you to say it with me. Come on, on three. One, two, three. The Lord is with us. Now, I don't know about you, but how many of ever, when you were a kid, you were getting picked on in the, uh, uh, out there on the field during school, elementary school, and you began to argue with the guy who was picking on you. said, you better not pick on me. My big brother's going to beat you up. He said, well, my big brother can beat your big brother up. I said, well, I said, but my daddy can beat your daddy up. He says, no, he can't. So I, I said, well, I got good news. My mama can beat your daddy up. <laughs> Mama's in the house. The Lord is with us. You got to understand that. This isn't your fight. It is his. God will defeat our enemies, no matter what it is. If it's, if it's physical, emotional, financial, God can intervene. That's what he says to Joshua in Joshua 1.18. And in 1.25, God will overcome your enemies. One of the most impressive verses, and I think you may have never seen it, so can I show it to you? I've read the book of Philippians a hundred times. I've studied it. I've, I've um, taught on it. But recently the Lord began to show me something that I needed to be mindful of. So I want everyone to turn to the book of Philippians just for a moment. Would you turn there? If you get there before I do say, I'm there. Some of you cheated. You got a cell phone and you just turned there. It's Philippians chapter 1, verse 28. Now listen to this. This is amazing to me. You still with me here? I'll start in verse 27. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. Without, listen to this without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This will be a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but you will be saved, and that by God. You're going, oh, what is that about? How many have ever been in a yard and a dog's trying to attack you? Did you know dogs can sense fear? And if you're afraid, they'll attack you? So you know what I do? I get my mean face on. And I tell that dog, if you try to bite me, I'm going to bite you back. I, I, I see myself as Samson taking the, the jaws of that dog and... <laughs> and I'm open. It's amazing what that dog begins to do. I haven't done anything. I just got my mean face on. Sometimes you have to put your mean face on to the devil. You say, well, Pastor, I'm afraid. Then fake it. Just plain fake it. Because <laughs> if you give in to the fear, you're going to be smashed. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. Act like it. The pastor, you've been afraid? Sure, there's been, attacks. there's been attacks in the middle of the night. That panic attacks, you know, come on you out of the blue. I'm awake and going, what is this? So I just start quoting the word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. I preach the word to the devil. We were in Calcutta, India years ago. First time my wife went to Calcutta. If you've ever been to Calcutta, it's the most demonized city in the world. It's where I was born. One of the men who dedicated me was a great man of God called Jiva Ratnam. He had tremendous power over demons. 
He was preaching at my dad's church in Calcutta, and he stops in the service and says, all the demons come up here, and people just stood up in a catatonic state and stood in one line, all like 10 soldiers, just like that. My dad said, whoa. Now that's power when you can command demons and people to get up. They all lined up, and he just kind of took them in the back room, took some tea, began to drink his tea. And then he started laying hands on them, bang, 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 like dominoes. All got delivered, screaming, hollering, shouting. I'm not going to do that this morning. Oh, please, Pastor, my husband needs it, please. I got news for you. You got power over demons. But demons work with fear. If they can arrest you with fear, they've, they've caught you. So you got to just get your mean face on every once in a while. We have greater power than we know. I like what Hezekiah says to his troops there in 2 Chronicles 32. He says, look, do not be afraid or discouraged because the king of Assyria and his vast army with him for there is greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Come on, God is with you. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Greater is he that is in us, John writes in 1 John 4, than he that's in the world. So don't you allow fear and discouragement to rob you. If you have to, Fake praise. There's fake news. See, there could be fake praise. Put your, fa put your faith face on. And stand strong in the Lord. I don't feel like it. That's your problem. Just slap yourself. Fourthly, God has given us his armor and his weapons and his strategy to defeat the devil. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 16, Be on your guard, stand firm in faith, be men of courage, be strong. You'll notice that in Ephesians 6, Paul talks about the armor that God has given us, the helmet of salvation, sword of the Spirit, and on and on and on. 2 Corinthians 10, he talks about the weapons we fight with are weapons not of the world, but on the contrary, their divine power to the demolishing of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretensions that set itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take up and literally tear down, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. There are stupid thoughts that come to your head. Your wife could tell you that. She tells me that a number of times. That's a stupid thought. Oh, you're right. That is pretty stupid. You take captive that stuff. You take captive. You say, huh? How do you do that? There was a time when I thought I was going to be a, a karate specialist. Don't look at my body. Come on now. Just stop it. <laughs> Fat men can kick. Amen. Now, let me tell you what happened. We had a a high degree black belt in my church in California. This is years ago when I was young. So we opened a karate studio in my garage and, and we started uh, training and had young men come in and we were witnessing to them, sharing the gospel. And it was a, it was a, form, it was a Chinese form of karate called Silam Fu. And then there was the hard style, which was Taekwondo. So I was learning both. And I found myself, you know, uh, I was a youth pastor at the time. I found myself one day sitting at my desk, and I was praying, talking to God. But while I was praying, I was doing a kata. You know, you, those of you that know what I'm talking about, you're doing these movements. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I, I'm doing a kata. You're, you're, you're supposed to be talking to me. What are you doing this for? I mean, it was very direct. And he asked me, why are you doing that? I thought about it. I thought, this is strange. 
In the middle of my talking to God, I'm doing some stupid kata. And the Lord convicted me. He said, son, son, is that what you're called to do? Or are you called to meet with me? And I began to evaluate what was taking over my mind. And so I realized I would allowed a stronghold to come into my mind. It's nothing wrong with learning karate, taekwondo, silam fu, whatever you want to learn. But if it begins to take over your mind, something's wrong. And so I realized I had a stronghold there. So every time I began to see myself starting to do a kata, I'd begin to pray. I'd pray for all my instructors. I'd pray for all the students in that class. And I began to turn it into a time of prayer. And every time I get a stupid thought, I take that stupid thought and I bring it into captivity and I begin to pray over what God's calling me to do. This is going to be your year of strength. Oh, I've got to stop. This is going to be your year of strength. Say it with me. I am going to be strengthened in 2018. So God is speaking to us. As individuals, faith will be our, faith will turn our weakness into strength. If you're reading chapter 11 of Hebrews, you'll notice that the writer of Hebrews begins to list a number of names. And he says these words, through faith, weakness was turned to strength. Whew. I want you to begin to imagine what it's going to be like this year. You've been weak emotionally. God's going to make you strong. You've been, your relationships have been weak. God is going to strengthen your relationships this year. God is going to physically strengthen you. He's going to help you financially. Things are going to begin to shift. You're beginning to see things turning. You're going to become strong. You're going to have wisdom to make right decisions. I love what the Word says in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. David grew stronger and stronger while the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. You're going to get stronger and stronger this year. Our church is going to get stronger and stronger. As a church, I'm claiming Isaiah 54, 7. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose nations and settle in their desolate cities. Dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. That's what's going to happen as a church. We're going to get stronger and stronger. Say it with me. We're going to get stronger stronger. The ministries you're in are going to get stronger. You're going to get better at being able to do it. Every ministry is going to be strengthened. You're going to see your gifts that He's given to you begin to be released in greater measure. You're going to get involved. And we're going to continue as a church to walk by faith. You see, you see what's happening here, but if you just for a moment sat in my office, you'd realize what God is doing all through KC. Just this last week, I signed documents to buy a new property in British Columbia, Rivelstoke, British Columbia. It's the, it's the snowboarding capital of Canada. We're opening an eternal riders center there. It's a marvelous piece of property. And uh, already signed documents to open a new church in, in Morgantown, West Virginia. About four months ago, I was driving into Branson, Missouri. As many of you know, we have an extension in Branson. And as I was driving in, we were celebrating the third anniversary. We were having a dinner that night, and I was driving from Springfield into Branson, and I happened to notice that the number one theater you see when you drive into Branson is the Yakov Theater. It's a huge sign on the highway, Yakov Theater. I'm driving in, I said, God, you see that sign? I want it to say King's Chapel. Did you know I walked, I came into that banquet that night, told Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, take me on over there to that Yakov Theater. I just want to pray. Walked around that theater, prayed. A few months ago, I said to Pastor Chris, I said, Pastor Chris, why don't you see if we can rent that, lease that building or buy it? Next Sunday, our church is moving into the Yakov Theater. Somebody say hallelujah. You say, Pastor, 
You will keep walking by faith. I'm out on the water. I'm telling you what. I just need some folks to walk with me. Somebody say hallelujah. We're not playing some little religious game here. We're going to get this nation saved. We're going to see our islands touched. We're going to do something for Jesus. Somebody stand to your feet and shout. This is your year of strength. Don't you allow the devil to rob you. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here to tell you. Fear and discouragement is going to be gone because you're going to put your mean face on. Your face of faith. And you're going to declare God is with me. If God is for you, who can be against you? Now we're going to pray. I want everybody to stand in your feet. We're going to pray. And God's going to do something right now for you. I'm going to believe that supernatural strength will begin from this moment on in your life. Things will turn. Things are going to turn. Lift your hands in the air. You're believing with me. Spirit of the living God, there are going to be businesses in this house that are going to begin to flourish in 2018. There are going to be jobs that are going to open up that are greater than the jobs that they had. There are going to be marriages that are going to be strengthened. There are emotions that are going to be healed and no longer plaguing your people. You are going to release strength to this house. Ministries will grow. People will get involved. There won't be room enough for the folk who want to be in this house. You will strengthen us. So as I reach my hands out to this great congregation, I declare strength, 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 strength is yours in 2018. Hallelujah. I want you to prophesy to the person next to you. You will become stronger in 2018. Prophesy it to them. Just prophesy it to them. Prophesy it to them. Prophesy it to them. You'll be stronger in 2018. You'll be stronger in 2018.